two weeks after four containers arrived on my farm from China delivering the components of our new poultry sheds, tragedy struck on the farm. A huge chunk of what was delivered to farm was stolen. But what is it that they say? What doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. Yep, so we went ahead and proceeded to erect our poultry sheds. Hi, it's Korewa. Back in November, we met up with the two engineers that we chose to erect our prefabricated sheds here on our farm. Now, way before the sheds arrived, we started looking for companies here in Ghana who would assemble our structures. We gathered quotations from about four or five different companies and let me tell you, they don't come cheap here in Ghana. But out of the blue, we got a call from a young guy, a structural engineer or is it a mechanical engineer, who was interested in erecting our sheds. So after initial discussions, we sent him our drawings and his quotation seemed the most reasonable out of the lot. And after doing some more due diligence and looking at what he has done in the past, we decided to go with him. He's not a big company, he's what you would term a startup or even doing this as a side hustle if you will. After we picked ourselves up, dusted ourselves off and invested in getting what was stolen quantified and reordered, we finally came to a consensus with the engineers. We drew up and signed the necessary contracts and made all the necessary payments and arrangements for the building project to actually commence. 10 inches down! 10 inches down! In our old poultry farm, we used to buy already prepared feed but going forward, we are planning on producing our own feed here at the farm. So we are currently erecting the structure that will house our feed now. We were also largely an egg production farm, but we want to experiment with broiler production as well. So we are building one of the many broiler sheds that we plan to have on our farm. So we decided to get him to start with the two smaller sheds first, which in this case are the feed mill and the broiler sheds. And if all goes well with erecting those, then we'll continue with him in building the much larger sheds. So that is the plan. Now you are submitting, now you are submitting the level here for you. So we put us around here, then the police who can dig here. After taking precise measurements, they start out by digging out these holes, and this is where the columns were constructed. <laughs> <laughs> what fascinated me with this build is that it took a lot of different kinds of tradesmen or craftsmen to erect these sheds. There were steel benders, there were carpenters, welders and so many different craftsmen and apart from these craftsmen a lot of different people were employed within the while that these sheds were built there were people in the neighboring town that were fetching water for the men to work there were laborers there were these people that run these cement mixing machines there were trucks that were delivering cement and other materials to site there were masons there are even motor riders that were being sent to buy pure water and um, carting people from one end to another so it was really fascinating to see how it all came together <laughs> so 
The reason why these men were so happy to be working is that this mixing, you know, concrete mixing machine in the distance, that was the first machine they got and that broke down. That's broke down like three days ago and then, or two days ago, and then yesterday we got this one that is currently working and that broke down too after about an hour of operation. So it's just been fixed about 30 minutes ago today and so that's why the men are so happy because now they can actually work and get paid. They couldn't get paid yesterday because the machine was broken and they feared that they wouldn't get paid today either. But fortunately the machine is working now and the work is ongoing. So there were two sets of engineers that worked on this build. There was one engineer that they did the foundation part of the build and the other engineer uh, did the actual erecting of the uh, shed. And they weren't always on site, but from time to time they would come and make sure that their respective foremen were doing the job that they were supposed to do and everything was on course. And part of my document too, Kakao. Okay. Wooden frames were placed into the hole, steel benders bended and concrete was poured to form these columns that will be the foundation of the sheds. Feed mill has already been done exactly like they're doing on the other side, pouring in the concrete. So when they're done, it's gonna look something like this. It's gonna look something like this, and then they're gonna pour concrete into the pillars that you see sticking out, and then they'll fill the rest of the hole. So these are the columns. These wooden forms are going to go over the rods that are sticking out um, to support the concrete that's poured in it. Okay. Okay. So for the feed mill, it appears all of these have been done. You can see. The guys are so once they've taken this out, this is gonna be the I don't know, like the foundation, the foundation of the film. You can see the foundation of the broiler shed in the distance, they're still working on that, they're not finished yet. This is gonna be the feed mill, and this is actually the smallest shed on the farm. This is gonna be the smallest shed. In terms of length and width, it's gonna be the tallest structure on the farm, but in terms of floor space, it's the smallest. 
and I think the egg collection shed is going to be the same size as the feed mill. This is the gentleman in charge of this project. He's the foreman. He's making all this happen. So after the concrete was poured, the wooden frames that were supporting the concrete came off and we had to wait a couple of weeks for these concrete columns to properly dry before the top bit of the shed was started. A couple of weeks later we came back for the second half of the build to commence. The exposed holes where the columns were were filled with construction gravels and then the, then the dig out started for the block work to begin. The heavy metal beams were sorted out between the two sheds that we were building, the feed mill and the broiler shed. And the good thing for me was that my husband was in Ghana around this time, so he got to be a part of and experience the process of this build, which allowed me to take a break from being the boss and allowed me to simply enjoy the build. After sorting out the respective beams between the sheds, they got to work erecting the beams and actually putting the structure together. With the broiler shed, they were able to do this manually. I guess they wanted to save some money. But with the feed mill being a much more you know taller shed they used this lifting vehicle i'm not sure what it's called to help them to erect the metal beams for the feed mill and very soon the structure was looking like this this is the skeleton of the broiler shed and there in the distance is the skeleton of the feed mill shed. Soon they were up on the roof putting on the roofing sheets. At this stage of the build it was all getting really really exciting. In the next video on this series, you will get to see the process that they took to be able to get to this stage and beyond for the broiler shed and this for the feed mill. Leave me a comment in the comment section below if you have any questions at all on building a prefabricated shed in Ghana or in Africa. Whether it's about how to procure it, the building process, price. Leave me all the questions in the comment section below and I will do a video answering all of those questions. If I have enough questions to answer, I'll do a video answering all of your questions. Kindly like this video so more people can see it and share this video with your groups. See you in the next one.